This is AntiTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove and replace the needle bar on a Singer Model 503A. This would also cover the 500A because they're very similar up here. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is remove the needle clamp and thread guide down here because to get it out we're going to have to pull it up through the bushings. So there's one screw to remove it and you want to use a well fitting, a good fitting screwdriver and you can you know you can pre-soak these uh, everything I'm doing here with uh, a little bit of uh, penetrating oil uh, if the machine is uh, hasn't been used or or it's pretty dirty, but it's good for you to know this because uh, a clean needle bar really makes sewing a lot better. So even just for uh, you know once a year maintenance or something like that, you could do this. Or if you had to replace, if you had a a net uh, um, rusted or bent needle bar or you wanted to test it to see if it was bent. So once we, uh, I should show you that. You can see that little screw and thread guide. They, they come apart. Once you've got the screw out, uh, it should just pull straight down. I usually twist it a little, and sometimes this can be uh, this can be a little tough. So, you know, penetrating oil, uh, heating it with a hair dryer, giving it a little tap to break it free. Be careful with that. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take out this thumb screw all the way. I don't remember if this has a pib or a jib inside. So let me take out the the little thumb screw that holds the needle in. Get that out of there. There we go. So now it's just going to slide down. And I got muck and stuff in there, but no jib, no little piece. So. And you can see some oil varnishing, which is real common. There's no rust on the machine. So that's good. Okay, so that first part is done. Let me change my screwdriver tip then. And then there's one screw up above to remove the needle bar itself. Okay, so I'm going to turn the hand wheel and I'm going to raise the needle bar up as high as it will go. Let me back out a little bit to show you why there. I want the needle bar up high so that I can access the screw. I don't I don't really know why but they put the screw on the side of the, of the needle bar clamp. Which I don't care for too much. I'm not sure why they did it but I'm sure they had their reasons. But by raising it up and continuing till it almost starts down, you raise up this thread take-up lever too, because you want that to be up out of the way. So with with the needle bar raised up, it's you can barely get in there <laughs> and get a screwdriver into that screw. This screw can be stubborn too. Especially if you know you inherited the machine or you bought it at a estate sale or garage sale or something. I'm going to try and get a little closer here. So here is the clamp, and on the side is the screw. The way I got the setting, setting it's kind of in the dark. Let's see if I can get. Better 
lighting over there. Yeah, kind of. Then I can't get my, my screwdriver in there. Let me see if I can turn it like this. Is that is that any better? A little bit. Put my hand here. I guess I won't block it too much. So I still have to angle down just a little bit to get to that screw. Right? So you want to be sure, again, you use a good fitting screwdriver. And you may need to hold the needle bar try to push uh, mm, away from you more than down because you can force the needle bar down and and there it goes okay usually once you break it free it you know comes out pretty quick and I'm going to take that set screw. It's kind of a, a bigger one uh, around, but it's very shallow. It, it doesn't, doesn't go in there very deep. So it's hard to find the right spot to loosen it enough to take the needle bar out without it falling out. So don't lose that. Put that in a magnetic tray or someplace safe, okay? Now we're going to see how we do with this needle bar. So I'm going to back out here. I'm going to turn the hand wheel down and a little bit. And I'm going to see if I can twist that needle bar uh, sideways. Yo, boy, is it stuck in that. Let's see if I can push it up. Uh -huh. I don't want to bend it, but boy, it's really stuck in this, uh, in the clamp here. I can see it looks pretty, pretty bad in there. So, that's not unusual. So I'm going to put a little penetrating oil. Let's see, where's my oil, oil rag? I don't want it dripping all over the machine here. And I'm going to put a shot of that in there. B. I get any on you? Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to let that sit for five or ten minutes and see. Uh, if that'll be enough but just in case while that's soaking I'm going to go hunt down my hair dryer in case I have to use that so when I feel it's loose enough to get out I'll come back okay uh, it's been about 10 minutes I guess and what I did was while that uh, penetrating oil was soaking in I took a little, a couple of sprays of my crud cutter, uh, cleaner and degreaser, and uh, like a Q-tip, and I soaked down here because the varnish and, and crud can build up on this, and the tolerances through the bushing here are very tight, and it can hang up there. So... I put that on and let it sit for a couple of minutes and then I just took a makeup remover type thing you can use a rag whatever and I cleaned off uh, hey look at that <laughs> it's already free I cleaned off my uh, needle bar with that and look the penetrating oil worked good so what I'm going to do now is see if I can, oh boy, look. When I pull that down, you, can you see that? That's showing up there. You see all that stuff? That's what, that's like varnished oil, and it gets in that uh, needle bar clamp and sits there and sits there and layers and layers, and it, it hardens it gets like a varnish on there so I'm actually gonna try and clean some of that off with this crud cutter 
uh, before I pull it up through the top bushing because like I said the the tolerances are really tight you know they they make the bushings just barely big enough for the needle bar to go through so that uh, you don't get wiggle and stuff like that so you can see some of its starting to come off here let me see if I got a little uh, I was looking for my brass detail brush but I found an old toothbrush here so let me get some of that crud cutter on there and see if that'll help yeah that's pretty it's on there <laughs> these little nylon bristles aren't doing much of anything to it so sometimes you just let the this is about a 50 percent crud cutter and you you could use a full strength on something this mucky see if i can can I rub some of that off Boy, it's really layers of it, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's see if that's enough that I can I can pull the um, bar up because it should just be able to pull right up out of the top. So I'll just push from the bottom here, and yeah, it's going to come. Yeah, just give it a twist and. Uh, just keep pulling it slowly but surely there we go so let's take a look at this so you can see all the varnishing that was uh, down in the bushing area and on the needle bar above the needle clamp and you can see where that clamping screw and that whole area gets gets all fouled up so that's why I said just as a yearly maintenance you know just to pull it out it doesn't take long and clean it with alcohol or crud cutter or whatever you like and uh, I'll show you how to put it back in but uh, that's how you get it out okay easy I know you can do that. You're probably excited to try it right now. Okay, let me get set up here and I'll show you how to put it back in. Okay, um, I'm going to put the needle bar back in in a moment. But as you can see, I didn't clean it up uh, because I'm going to be doing more restoration work on this. I just wanted to show you how to do the needle bar in case that that's all you plan to do and you know since you've gone to the trouble to take out the needle bar you take out this uh, needle bar connecting piece right here you just pull it right out and you see that the little tube back here see if I can get in a little bit I know my hand blocked that so it just goes, it just slides uh, into this little tube back here, right there, and uh, show you this from the side here. It's good to take it out and clean it because it gets uh, mucky and everything too. So when you when you pull out this connecting stud. From the little holder there connecting link you'll notice that uh, the side that the set screw goes into is threaded and the other side is not so even though it looks like it could go either way you're gonna have to put the threaded side on the right so you can get the set screw in and the little piece in the center um, kind of a little bearing in there it, it kind of moves left and right a little bit and spins around because of the zigzag function on the sewing machine okay 
So you can clean this up, uh, get a little oil on it, and see if I can get that set screw started back in here because it's going to be easier, I think, to put the set screw in while this connecting stud is out of the machine than when it's back in the machine. Put it just a little bit in there. I'm going to make sure I look through there and it's not blocking where I'm going to put the needle bar. Okay. So I'll put that back in there. And hey. And I will put uh, a link to one of my videos about cleaning the small, the small parts. Um, so if you haven't seen that, you, you'll know how I clean the parts. But we've got to get the... Uh, see, what if I... Yeah, maybe I'll put that... Turn the hand wheel so that... That needle bar connecting stud goes down a little lower maybe. But then we're going to take the needle bar through that top bushing and just kind of twist it back and forth a little bit and get down here and see if we can't uh, line up with that needle bar connecting stud. Whoop. I think I turned it. Yeah, i got to make sure my screw is on the other side there in the front of the machine and don't forget this is a slant needle so it's going to go at a nine degree slant okay and twist and turning and so I've got it through the upper bushing needle bar connecting stud and now I'm going down into the lower bottom bushing okay and there is my needle bar. Now, since you took that out, when you put it back in, you're going to have to set the height to the factory recommended height. Mm hmm. So, what I do is uh, get the. I just. Uh, Turn the hand wheel towards me so that that connecting link or the connecting stud is up where I can get the, the screwdriver on it again. Okay. You see it up here? And then I'll take my screwdriver and I'll just kind of eyeball the, the height. Um, with the connecting stud all the way up, I just kind of put the needle bar on the bottom even with the bushing for the pressure bar, just for now. And I go in and I'm going to tighten that screw enough that I want to hold the needle bar, but I want to be able to move it too. See how I can move it up and down a little bit? Yeah. So I just tighten it a little bit so that it won't move on its own. But uh, now I'm going to show you how to set the height on it. Okay. So now I want to turn the hand wheel towards the front of the machine and get this needle bar connecting stud to its lowest point. See there, it's bottomed out. Then on the needle bar, there's two timing marks, two circles around the needle bar that are etched right into it. And the top one is for needle bar height. And with this connecting stud all the way down, I want to move the needle bar 
up until that top timing mark is just about to disappear into the bottom of the bushing, the silver bushing. So you got to get way down there and you got to see that two marks and you got to get it up to where the top mark is parallel with the bottom of the bushing. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to eyeball this mm, needle bar and you see the little hole there that holds the needle clamp. You want it to be at a 90 degree angle from the front. Now there's a more technical way to set the turning of this but for this purpose right now that's all I'm going to do is just eyeball it as far as how the needle bar is turned and I'm going to be sure that my needle bar top mark whoops I twisted a little okay now I'm going to gently turn that hand wheel because I don't want the needle bar to slip. I'm going to turn it up to the high end by turning the hand wheel towards the front of the machine. Yeah. See it was down here. All right. So now that I've got my needle bar height, I'm going to take it up to the top as high as it will go and I want that thread take up lever to be up out of the way up here now I can get access to that screw from the side and you see you see what I mean about the putting it on the side over here I, I don't know what the I guess because this is here you can't go from the front but it's I'm, I wasn't the engineer, that's for sure. So I'm sure that they. Come on, you. I can get a little more light over here so I can see that. Don't move, needle bar. Don't slip on me. Oh man, I think I'll just take my narrow screwdriver and put in there and just snug it up. Not, not tighten it too hard and take a chance of stripping, but enough that I'm sure the needle bar won't move. Okay, like the camera tripod moves. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So now I'm going to turn the hand wheel forward again and I'm going to bottom out that needle bar connecting stud because I want to go down here and double check my timing mark. So when I go down here and check uh, with the connecting stud at the lowest position my needle bar is too low. I missed it. Yeah, I've got, I've got about an eighth of an inch sheesh, above the upper timing mark. So I'm going to raise this back up. I think I had that set screw a little too loose. So I'm going to go in and I've got to loosen that set screw a little bit so that I can move the needle bar. Not too loose. I think I had it too loose before and the needle bar just moved when I was uh, turning up. Let's try that. Oh, that's too hard. I can't twist or move the needle bar. Let me back off just a pinch there. Yep. Boy, it's about a millimeter of Okay, uh, that might work. 
Okay, so let's try it again then. I'll turn the hand wheel, lower the connecting stud to the bottom, make sure it's bottomed out. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to raise that needle bar so that the top timing mark, the top band, is just parallel with the bottom of the silver bushing down in there. Don't look at the beige paint. Look at the bushing. Oh boy, that looks better. Okay. And then try and keep that hole at a 90 degree. And then I'm going to slowly raise this up to where I can get the screwdriver. You can't even get an offset screwdriver in there when it's down there. And they don't tell you this in the service manual. They just say loosen the screw, tighten the screw. <laughs> so this is just a, something I developed how to do it. Works for me. Okay, so I'll roll that hand wheel forward again, bottom out. And I'm going to go down here again. And oh, I did a lot better this time. Now that top mark. Top band is right just barely below the bushing, just about to disappear into the bushing. So that's good. I'll come back up to where I can get my good screwdriver on it. This bit is a real tight fit, but that's good because you don't want to strip that set screw and see if I can get it in there this time because now that I've double checked in my I've got the right height and I've got this eyeballed pretty good for 90 degrees then I'm going to tighten that set screw up permanently okay now if, if your goal was to take out the needle bar and replace it or clean it and clean the connecting stud and brush out the bushings and so forth, you would be done and you can put your uh, needle clamp, you know, back, back on there and you can put in the screw and then there's the, f the formal way to be sure that you've got the needle bar turned in the right direction is to put the needle clamp back and to put two needles two needles uh, in there and clamp them in and then uh, rotate the hand wheel until the needle bar the needles go down and they're right in front of the hook when, when they bottom out if your timing's right they'll be right in front of that hook okay and then you want to see that both needles are equidistant from in front of the hook that they're not one's farther than the other or like that and that's when you you have to turn this again if you messed up, you know, if, if your eyeball wasn't good, that's the formal way to make sure that the needle bar is aligned um, left to right. If those two needle points are equidistant from the hook. So I'm going to take this all out because I'm going to continue restoring the machine. But at the end of the video, I'll... I'll do a scan of the page of the service manual that explains all this and I'll put it on there for I don't know like 10 seconds or something so you can you can pause and print the screen and you could have a printed directions too if you want about how to put two needles in here to make sure that the needle bar is aligned up and down the main thing I wanted to share was this tricky way to get that screw loose because you just can't get directly to it. And I, I couldn't find an offset screwdriver that would get in that little tiny space. 
But I think you got the idea now, right? So that's how you would remove and replace the needle bar, set the height, and if you follow those directions at the end of the video, you'll see about putting the two needles in there and to make sure that they're equidistant from the hook point. Yay! Okay. What do you think? You can do that? I think you can. I think you could do that. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll come back and see me. Comment, question, subscribe if you like. Take care.